and that's really how I stay productive. That's one of the reasons. So hopefully they got some value, but that's just something tactical I've done. Dude, that's incredible. This is one of those podcasts that people are going to need to listen to probably, I don't know, seven, eight times because yeah, there was so much to unpack there. Good job. Yeah. Good press with your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. So this is the third podcast from last Friday that we recorded um, and I'm really excited about this one with Peter Vuk. This one gets really, really tactical, uh, but I think that it's going to be one of the most powerful that you've seen. Make sure that you've got a pen and paper or at least the notes open on your iPhone because he's going to lay out some incredible nuggets on how to get more productive, um, use your time wisely and level up incredible conversation with Peter. I'm really excited to get to know him better and excited to introduce him to those of you that have not seen him before. So enjoy this conversation. This is the Breadwinner Podcast. Now, let's get into the show. What's up, everybody? Tyler Harris here, and this is the Breadwinner Podcast. And man, I'm excited to have Mr. Peter Vug in the house and we are going to bring some, not just interview type material today on the podcast. We're going to get a little bit more tactical than we usually do and give you guys something that you can take over the weekend and implement next week and make some stuff happen. But man, I want to bring on Peter. And uh, number one, brother, thank you for being on the podcast. I know you've got a lot of different stuff going on, so I appreciate you being here. But tell everybody who you are, where you're from, and what you're focused on right now. My pleasure, bro, and thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I am just a young entrepreneur man that found his way, and I'm unemployable, so I had no other option, either become an entrepreneur or I hate my life because I can't work for somebody. So I grew up in, or I grew up in the Bay Area for, for six, seven years, moved up to Oregon, and that's kind of where I got my roots. Um, and I got into eBay when I was 15. So I've, I've just had a mini series of breakthroughs in my life that made me kind of who I am today. And that's obviously a whole topic. I've, I feel like I failed my way to success, to be honest. I don't want to talk about my failures today, <laughs> but I think people need to understand that when people see people that are succeeding, they forget that they literally failed to get there. If they didn't, they wouldn't be where they are. So I have a lot of failures. But my first taste of entrepreneurship when I was 15, uh, my dad had a construction company. I was working for my dad, and a couple of my friends were, and I hated hard labor, like with a passion. I didn't like anything to do with hard labor. I just wanted to kind of use my brain. And one day I just was so sick of, we were shoveling sand, uh, probably like 30, 40 yards. And I told my dad, I, I can't, I got I have something to do. He knew I was obviously messing around and <laughs> I didn't want to work, but I was, I started selling things on eBay. So my friend would work all day for my dad. He made about $63. He was making seven, eight bucks an hour. He worked all day. I had quit that day and said, I got to go check my, I was selling Jordans on eBay at 15. And then I would eventually, uh, buy and sell and have my friends sell, give him a commission. I had checked my shoes that day. It was in the summer, and I had made ninety-one dollars that day selling selling one pair of shoes. And my friend had made sixty working eight hours all day, ass off doing hard labor. Yep, it just come. Um, so my thought process was, Tyler, how did I just make ninety-one dollars in like one minute putting something online? He made sixty eight hours. So my fifteen-year-old brain was like confused. And I want people to understand, I got paid kind of for the courage to think differently and to take a risk. But that started my entrepreneur journey because I saw something different about using your brain, not just doing hard labor like everyone. I grew up in a small town of 7,000 people, and it was almost like you were destined to do certain things career-wise. I didn't want any of those things. So I got into <clears throat> entrepreneurship in high school, and I actually got when I was 18 because everyone was talking about getting normal jobs. I thought I should get a normal job because everyone was doing it. Worst two months of my life, I quit. Then I got into direct sales. This was the first thing that really uh, kind of catapulted my, my ambition because it was the first job I had that was really kind of structured, but I had full control over my potential and what I made. Yep. So I did really well there, and then I got up to becoming a, a district manager where I ran my own office, 
and I failed miserably. All my savings I had built up from the couple of years before, I went broke. And because motivating yourself is one thing, but motivating a team is a whole different story. People think it's the same, it's not. So I didn't know how to motivate anyone else leadership wise, so I went broke. And from that moment being broke, I was 21, 22, Tyler, I went on a journey of self-discovery and figuring myself out and I hired mentors and I really studied and I became obsessed with personal growth and then development. And from that moment forward, that's when my book came. I, I was dead broke and I made six figures in six months. Uh, after that, I hired a seven-figure mentor, was able to make seven figures. And now I, I, I feel like I, I have the dream life where I do what I want. I travel. I created an academy that has a couple thousand members. And I love what I do. But it was all because I started understanding who I was mm. and understanding the power of, of not just the right habits, but mentorship and networking. And that's where I am now. I'm just continuing to better my best. And my job is to really shift this culture forward. I love working with millennials and people that are younger that, that really have that drive but just need the, the guidance and the resources. So my, my life, my focus is, is kind of working with the millennial generation to help them kind of live a life on their terms and become the best at what they do. So I'm just a young hustler, man, trying to find his way. That's it. Yeah, I love it, man. I love what you yeah. said in the beginning when you talked about that story with your shovel in the sand and, and how you skipped out and saw that you were making more. And I just had a vlog episode this week where we talked about this value of like creating how realizing how much your time is worth based on the income that you want to make. And so I did the whole vlog about 876,000 in income and it's a hundred dollars an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And just using that as an example is if that's your goal, if that's what you feel you are worth, then anything that you're doing, that's not worth a hundred dollars. You got to either delegate it, pay somebody else to do it or just skip it. And you gave the, like the easiest, best, like, organic example of that and it was that hey my buddy he stayed he made this i made this there's a gap there that means i probably shouldn't be doing that right and the reality though is with the majority of people out there that gap's way wider like the stuff that they're spending oh, time 100%. on the stuff that they're spending time on the gap is like you're just wasting your time well, the problem is they don't know their worth, and if you don't know your worth, other people determine it for you. Yes. And I, I've, I've, I've studied it's it's mind boggling to me, Tyler, because another thing is people want certainty. So a lot of companies are paying them to kind of give up on their value and give up on their dreams. They're like, yeah. hey, we'll pay you fifty k a year. We'll pay you consistently. You have to give up on all your dreams, yep. but we'll pay you fifty thousand guaranteed. They're like, oh my gosh, that's exciting. <laughs> then they realize, shit, that's the worst thing you could ever do is have someone pay you to give up on your dreams. Yep. So I, I was so lucky to have that perspective, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know it was perspective then. I, in yep. my head, I wasn't a smart kid. I didn't get the best grades. I was always in trouble in class. I had so much energy. <laughs> I was just thinking, how in the world did I just make that? So you're right. It's just yep. the perspective shift, and sometimes you have to have it happen to you before it's too late because most people wait till their back's against the wall. Absolutely. So yeah. we mentioned some failures and you said we're not going to talk about them. But let's talk about like, I don't know, one. You want, we could. So, you know, my, fa my favorite quote of all time is that every successful person has a painful story. And the part that I always add on to it is, will your painful story have a successful ending? And I know that all the pain in my past, like, ah, God, I'm so grateful for it because it happened for me, not to me. And it made me who I am today. And and so what's one of those things that you look back on and yeah, it was painful then, but it made you who you are now and why you've been successful <clears throat> now. Well, I have a couple. Um, I think one was my senior year. I was going to college at U of O and uh, all my friends were, uh, summer was coming and, and I had an opportunity to run a business. Didn't have much money, was struggling. But at the end of the, my senior year, I, I could either like finish the year off and graduate, but business opportunity and hang out with my friends and kind of be normal like them or I could literally drop out of college go start this business leave all my friends and, and really really be alone up in Seattle by myself and I chose I don't know why I had a couple breakdowns I called one of my managers at the time like I don't know if I could do this but I left college early let a lot of people down um, left all my friends all my friends were like 20 21 ready to go party go to the yeah. swimming pool hang out with girls and I left to go start a business by myself in Seattle with no money Wow and I felt like a failure because I went broke for a while I was struggling I had no friends up there and that was a I don't know if it was a every failure I've had now I look back that's exactly my wife asked me like two weeks ago she goes would you change anything about your past and I really thought about it and I wouldn't 
yeah. because it's exactly who I am. But I get goosebumps thinking about that because I was in a one bedroom apartment, Tyler, with no box spring, just a mattress, no yeah. furniture. I didn't have money to go to the drive through. And I felt like at that moment, I felt like a failure. I'm like, why did I just do this? But looking back, those are those moments of decision where it's like, wow, if I didn't make that decision, I would not be who I am today. So that was something that, I don't know if it was a failure now looking back, but in the moment, I felt like I let everyone down. And I said I was gonna go do this entrepreneur thing, and then I was not making money, I was broke, and I dropped out of college, and obviously my parents weren't happy. So that was one part that just was really stressful to me, and it, and it hurt me for a while, till I realized, thank God I did that, because that's who I am now. So yeah. that was one of them. Yeah, absolutely, man. And so let's let's get a little bit more tactical for people today. So one area that everyone can improve on is their productivity. And I personally, like, I'm constantly looking for different things that I can implement in my daily routines to make sure that I'm most efficient, that I'm prioritizing in the right way, that I'm getting all this – so much stuff going on that it all gets done – in the timely manner that I can level up and level up and level up. So <coughs> let's give some people some tactical advice on some things that they can implement to do that, to get more productive, yeah, to sure. get everything they need to get done and to level up, man. Well, the, that was my first step. So when I was broke and I didn't realize I had a framework for going from broke to six figures and from six to seven, I didn't realize it at the moment. Looking back, that was my first step. You have to gain absolute clarity yep. on exactly who you are, who you're not, who you need, and like where you're going. If I ask 100 entrepreneurs, I'm so glad you asked this question because I could give them the productivity keys. If they don't know where they're going or why they're going there or they don't have clarity on exactly what their ideal outcome is, it doesn't matter. They could be productive doing nothing. Yeah. I see entrepreneurs working 80 hours a week and they're broke. Yep. So it's not about the hours you work. It's the work you put in the hours. Absolutely. And for me, it wasn't about working harder or smarter. It was about working right based on my industry. So for me, I had to get clarity on what I wanted. If I ask 100 entrepreneurs, what is your ideal outcome in the next six months? 99 out of 100 have no clue. Oh, I want to make more money. I want to build a business. Yeah, no shit. Everyone <laughs> does. But what, like, what is your exact outcome? Like, How many customers do you want? How much money are you making monthly? How involved are you in the business? How many people do you have on your team? What's your systems looking like? They can't figure it out. Yep. So for me, I got crystal clear on exactly what I wanted. And here's the, here's the thing. You have to base that off your potential and what's possible, not your past. Yep. See, most people base their vision off their past or off insecurities. Mm. And they wonder why they, they hit these small goals because that's all they set for themselves. So first of all, get crystal clear. So for me, I wrote down, I, I always do this. I do this every week. It's called my weekly mash fund, but I also do it every six months. And I, and I keep very crystal clear clarity on where I'm going and why. And I adapt and adjust along the way. So you have to master yourself first. So I call this the one page productivity plan that's really helped me. So I got crystal clear on what I wanted. In one paragraph, just write down your ideal outcome. If there was no limitations, and we both know this, I know 15 and 16 year olds, my man, making 500,000 to a million dollars a year. Yep. And I know broke 40 year olds. Yep. So age is irrelevant. People are like, I have 20 years of experience. No, you don't. <laughs> you have one year repeated 20 times because you're doing exactly. the same thing over and over again. So, I mean, age is irrelevant these days. Where you're from is irrelevant. There's no more excuses left. So when you write down this one page or this one paragraph of what's your ideal outcome, don't have any limitations. I mean, if everything went your way, what's ideal? Yep. Then after that, I had to figure out what was most important to me and what my values were. So if you start living and basing everything off your values, that's how you're going to be the most fulfilled and be the most congruent. So if I didn't do this, I would not have built a business around my lifestyle and I would have been stressed out. So a lot of people get into a business because either it's easy or they get sold on it or they think that's what they want, but they don't fully think things through. They don't get intentional. So what happens is two, three years down the road, they're like, oh, shoot, this is the wrong business. So they just wasted two, three years of their life doing something that has a cap or that doesn't scale. right? So that's why the values are important. So for me, I had to write down my values. So like I have the vision and then, okay, what are my top values? And they change based on the stage you're at in your business. For me, one of my values was financial freedom because I had no money, right? Now it's different. Now it's family and legacy and lifestyle and peace of mind. But write down the top values that mean the most to you. Okay, so whether it's like income, whether it's flexibility, whether it's potential upside, whether it's freedom, whether it's adventure. And underneath that, I wrote down the top five things that I had to accomplish for me to be fully satisfied and excited about my results this next six months. So I challenge everyone watching and listening, 
what are the five results that you're trying to accomplish in the next six months that are most congruent to what you want and to your vision? Okay, that's a big, big key. So I don't know what they are for, for obviously you. Yep. They're different based on when you do this. But for me, it was very clear exactly what I had to do to make my first six figures because I was connecting with people that were already making six figures. So I really leveled up my circle of influence. So one key to productivity people don't talk about is get around four or five other people that are productive as hell mm -hmm. that could tell you what to do and cut your learning curve in half. Yeah. So I wrote down my top five uh, goals. Once I did that, here's where the fuel comes from. Then I wrote down 20 or 30 reasons of why I had to get out of the mess I was in, why I, I did not want to be broke anymore. I thought about instances when I was younger. There was one when I was younger where uh, one of my mom's friends, they had their wedding anniversary. She invited all her best friends from high school, middle school. She handwritten notes to them. She was excited. Her best friend couldn't make it. And she had eight months in advance. I'm sure you can guess why she couldn't make it. No time off, no money. Bro, you're 45 years old. What do you mean? No. What are you doing? What? What'd you do the last 45 years of your life? So I'm like 18, 19. Like I'm never going to have someone else tell me what I'm worth or what to do or when to take off. That shit drives me nuts. So I never forgot those moments. So whenever I feel like giving up, I'm like, no, I'm not going to have that lifestyle where someone else tells me what to do. I can't stand that. I saw how devastated my mom was just because she had someone else telling her what she was worth. So I wrote these things down, these reasons. So 25 reasons. And here's the deal. Most of them are BS. Probably five of them are really internal that really drive you. Because if you're not waking up at four or five in the morning, fired up and excited to take on the day, you don't have strong enough reasons. And the second you get challenged, you're going to quit and settle. Then you're going to validate, right? Yeah. So I had to write down my strongest reasons of why I wanted to make these five results happen. Because reasons come first, results come second. People have all these productivity tactics. They have these planners and all these things. If you don't have strong enough reasons, you can have every productivity tactic in the world. You're not doing nothing. Yep. Yeah because you don't have that internal drive, right? Why you do what you do, I can guarantee it, Tyler, if we dug deep, you have some pretty strong reasons of why you do what you do. Yep. And they're not because you want a nice car. I could, tell by, I could just tell by who you are. Yep. I know you like nice things, so do I, but that's not the reason, Absolutely. right? So five reasons that drive you that really when you look at them, you get fired up and excited like I am right now. Then you wanna write down what key behaviors and habits, okay? What are one or two key behaviors or habits you need to master that are most relevant to those five goals that you want to accomplish in the next six months. Now, here's the biggest thing that most people don't understand. I did 10 external and 10 internal. And then I threw away all the reasons that didn't really fire me up, right? That I was like, nah, if you're still, if you write your reasons down and you're still lazy, <laughs> you have a problem, right? <laughs> They're not your right reasons. So I, on the bottom, then I wrote down the one subject or the one skill skills are weapons in this new economy the one skill that i needed to master that are most relevant that i can accomplish all those things now here's the catch that most people don't understand now you are very focused on mastery versus overload mm -hmm. so with all the information out there when i was struggling i got two pieces of advice from society that was the worst advice ever one just work harder <laughs> stupidest advice ever because i was working 40 hours then i went to 50 then to 60, then I was at 80 and I was still not making any money. Yeah. And then they said, study, study, read all the books. So I studied everything and then I was overwhelmed. So the advice sucked that I got, yeah. right? So now it's mastery. So people are obsessed with information, Tyler, especially millennials. They study everything, listen to every podcast, read every book, mm -hmm. audio, then they're overwhelmed. No, 95% of that doesn't matter. It's about executing what you've learned and then don't move on till you've seen the results. So my challenge for myself was, okay, now if it's marketing that I need to master, that's all I'm studying. Podcast, books, audios, YouTube. The only thing I'm studying is that one thing I chose to master that's most relevant to my vision. So most people are going to every event and they have this grass is greener mentality where it's like, I got to study more. I got to study more. No, you don't. Get addicted to outcomes and results, not information and knowledge. So that was the last step where I was like, okay, I'm going to master the, this skill and this trait that's most relevant. And I'm, that's all I'm going to do. Once I did that, productivity took care of itself. Yep. And I reviewed my weeks and I knew exactly where I was going. And anytime I had a roadblock, which anytime you set a goal that's, that's worth something, you're going to have a roadblock. Mm -hmm. But my reasons pulled me through that. So that's something tactical that I've done that every single time I do that. Now, the goal is to let your vision guide you, not your current circumstances. Let yep. this, I have it from 2015 right here, and I keep updating it. This is one from 2015, not joking. Yep. So I, I have them every year, 
and I let those guide me. So it doesn't matter what I'm going through, what my feelings or emotions tell me, I'm locked in on the prize. And that's really how I stay productive. That's one of the reasons. So hopefully they got some value, but that's just something tactical I've done. Dude, that's incredible. This is one of those podcasts that people are going to need to listen to probably, I don't know, seven, eight times because yeah, there was so much to unpack there. But if you just take those simple, those are simple, <laughs> simple steps, but put together and written down will make the biggest impact. That's, that's absolutely incredible. One question. So the the problem I think most people have with a process like you just took people through is they don't get specific enough. They're not clear on the actual things that, that need to happen, that actual goals. And with like with us, a lot of people that listen are, are in sales and, and I own a life insurance company and we sell life insurance. And I ask agents and, and I'll say, what's your goal this year? How much do you want to make this year? Uh, I want to make 500 grand. Great. How are you going to do that? Um, I'm going to sell a lot. Okay, great. Well, let's actually figure out what that looks like. Okay, so if you need to earn 500000 in income, that's going to mean that you're going to need to sell this many policies. Now, let's break that down. Okay, this, that's this many quarterly. That's this many monthly. That's but this now, many but now you want it more than them. That's the problem. Now exactly. you're wanting it more than them because you're going through it. That's why it's just the 5% rule. I, exactly. I've always seen that. So it's like I agree. It, here's the reason I think it's because it's harder. It's yeah. easy to say something and talk. Oh, my goal is a million. I'm going to crush it. Yeah, mm -hmm. a three-year-old can talk. Yeah. So it's interesting how you went right into diving into exact tactics like you do, which is why you're the 5%, yeah. and most of them aren't. So if you're watching, if someone else has to tell you what to do or break it down for you, I mean, I don't even know why you're going for that goal. So let's you know talk I mean? to the other 95% right now, though. <laughs> so, I mean, right. that, cause that's just Most the of them won't listen anyways. Yeah. <laughs> or that's let's all they'll in. do. Or that's all they'll do. They're like, man, he just said a lot of really great stuff. All right, what's on the next podcast? <laughs> but, man, like, let me, just... let me Let me say this. Hold your thought. This is my, yeah. my checklist, too, so yeah. they have tactics. When, when I'm studying, I go, okay, is this information congruent to my six-month vision? That's yeah. one. Is this information proven and taught by somebody who has the real results that I want? and has similar values to me. Because yep. anyone these days can write a book, like anybody can write a book, yeah. right? Have I took, this is a big one, have I executed, seen results, and took action on the previous information I've listened to and read? And fourth, am I certain this is the best possible information and training on this subject? People always ask me, dude, how'd you make seven figures so young? How, how'd you do this? I was just intentional. I made sure everything I studied and put in my brain was the best possible training and information possible for that subject. So those are the checklists. A lot of people make themselves feel better, Tyler, by they read a book. They're like, I read this book. And then they're like, I'm going to read another book. They haven't taken any action, yep. but they make themselves feel better because they're obsessed with personal growth mm -hmm. and not execution. So I just wanted to go through that. Go ahead. I, yeah, I get so, passionate about this. No, me. I mean, and, and I do too. And I, and I get fired up and you talked about direct sales and, the, and, and you see this a lot in direct sales. You, you have a lot of people that are really, really excited because they're learning a lot and they're growing and they're getting finally for the first time into personal development. But I just ask them, I say, Hey, what was the AGI on your tax return last year though? Like I get it. You learned a lot and you felt good and you connected with people and you feel great and you're empowered. But, at the end of the day, like, did you make any money? Like that's, that's, that's what's most important if Bottom the line. goal is a dollar amount. Right. And so let's, I want to talk about the basis of, you talked about these reasons and you talked about the vision and a lot of that has to do with someone's purpose and figuring out what their purpose is. Because what I found is frustration is created by judging your potential on the wrong purpose. Right. And so you can freaking take a hammer and you can bang it. Or let's just say this, for example, I can take this MacBook I'm staring at right now and I can smack a nail with it over and over and over. And at some point it'll probably push it a little bit, but I'm judging it on the wrong purpose. Like I'm judging this MacBook's potential on the wrong purpose. And so many people are struggling to try to figure out what that purpose is. And so a lot of people I can just envision, they're listening to this podcast and they're saying, that's great, Peter. Like it <clears throat> makes a whole lot of sense to figure all this stuff out. But the job that I'm in right now, like it's just, it doesn't provide that opportunity for me. And so how do I go figure out what I am supposed to be doing right now? Yep. So good question. I actually got in trouble for this. 
at Success Magazine, not Trouble, but they were going to publish a big article, and I went against what they believed, so they didn't publish it, which is that's just the industry in a whole. Yeah. Um, so I don't fully believe it's, it's it's just about passion because people use that as a crutch and excuse. Yep. Um, I think it's about results because you you become passionate when you're good at something. Yep. So I think instead of focusing on your passion, get good at something that pays well, that actually matches your values. It's yeah. about values and what's most important to you. I don't yeah. know what I'm passionate about. I just know what I want, who I am, what I need to be fulfilled, and where I'm going. So I think people just need to get good at something. And when you're good at something, you'll be passionate, I promise you. When yeah. you get a check for 100 grand for one speech, you're going to be fired up to speak, even if you don't love speaking. Well, That's speaking the bottom of, line. Is, well, yeah. speaking of speaking, like, speaking of speaking, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but when I All saw good. you at no Take Ownership, here. when I saw you at Take Ownership, uh, CJ, I think before or after you spoke, he, that's one of the things he said. He was like, hey, are you chasing hustle or are you chasing, and everyone's like, passion, right? No, it was gifts. Are you chasing your gifts? Like, because passion, you can become passionate. You can lose passion. Like, that'll go up and down, but your gifts are your gifts. Like, that's the things that you were born with, and are you operating out of those? And you're, dude, you're exactly right. And what I know is the opportunity of a lifetime, the, you know, thing that you were born to do is never going to find you if you're not putting in the work in what you're currently doing. Like you never hear 100%. the guy that's laying on the couch and just being lazy. And then this opportunity came and his life changed. It was no, he was crushing it at the job he hated. He was crushing it at whatever he happened to be doing at the time. Then the opportunity came along and then that's when everything changed. So it's, 100%. it's, it's being focused on, like you said, becoming an expert in what you're currently doing so that you and just being irreplaceable. Exactly. exactly. You're hundred percent right. And here's what people don't realize. Dude, I love, we could talk about this for days. I'm getting fired up. Here's so I left my my direct sales company. I had broke all the records and and I and I there was I, I really was capped out. Mm-hmm. I left, and and the management like the the leadership was so old school and traditional, and it just was going downhill. And now it's it's a, down quite a bit. But uh, two years after I left, um, a company came and recruited most of the the, the heavy hitters out of our company. Yeah. Um, and here's the crazy thing. The people that were crushing it, Tyler, at our company left our company and crushed it. The people that were mediocre that did (laughs) okay at our company, they left and they were mediocre and okay in the other company. The broke people that made excuses at this company, they went to the other company and they were still excuses. Here's what you need to understand. Wherever you are, you're still there. You're the constant. So whether you leave companies or do what, it's you're still there. Yep. So if you can't spark your own fire and you can't figure out what you're good at, then you need to understand it's all on you to figure out your unique value. Just like people in school, if, if you're really good at sports, you love sports. Yep. But if you ask someone in high school, do you like sports? They're like, no, I hate sports. Those athletes, <laughs> it's because they suck at them. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's yep. just how it goes. So that's my take on that is just wherever you are, you're there. So you better figure out a way to become irreplaceable, develop a skill that's so valuable and so needed Mm -hmm. and get paid highly for what you do that, trust me, it'll turn into a passion. The fact that I could fly me and my wife private wherever I want to go, whether I'm passionate or not, I know I love my lifestyle. I love impacting people and I love where I'm at. So whether if I lose my passion for a week, I'm not complaining about it. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's just, I think people use passion as a crutch. Yeah, but I don't know what I'm – so what? Still keep working towards something. Yep. Figure out who in the industry is doing what you want to do that you love. Figure out who has a lifestyle that you're proud of, that you're excited to kind of emulate, yep. that have similar values, and figure out what they're doing and do something similar and get paid. Like if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. I just want – I didn't want it bad enough at first, which is why I stayed broke. Yep. But once I wanted it bad enough and I had so much pain and so many reasons – I was going to make it happen. You know what I mean? And the, so, other, and the other thing is too, a, when, when you're in what you may not be passionate about or born to do, you don't have to be passionate about what you're doing, but you can be passionate about out. what it affords you the ability to do. 100%, 100%. I mean, that, that's why people, they have this mentality of like, I'm stuck. I'm like, you, you're, you're stuck because you're saying you're stuck. Like, that's it. Like no one loves, no if someone tells you they are passionate about selling life insurance, they've just really bought into the lie they've been telling themselves. No one's passionate about selling life insurance, but I spent 17 hours a day doing it, sold 109 policies this week. And I'm not passionate about that, but I'm passionate what it's going to give me the ability when I leave here and go to my house and spend time with my family and do all this other stuff. Like talk to you on this podcast right now. So it's, 
at some point, if you're not an entrepreneur, if you have a job, a job's a job's a job. Like you excel at it, you crush it. And then what does that give you the ability to do when you're off work? And that's where your passion may lie. And it's just, man, it's just an all in mentality that you obviously have got, man. And what, what I wanted to know is what's one thing looking back that you quit doing that enabled you to succeed? Uh, I think I quit pleasing people. Okay. I quit pleasing people and I, uh, I just started saying no a lot more than yes. Okay. So I started valuing my time to where I asked myself, is this going to contribute to my freedom or is this going to contaminate my freedom? Hmm. And one of my values is peace of mind. So if it's going to contribute to my freedom, even if I'm going to get paid 20 K, I'm like, yeah, it's not worth it. So I just started saying no. And I stopped fearing people right when I stopped fearing what people thought. And once I realized we're on this earth for like, like, a bleep of existence. Why the hell would I fear someone else or what they think? I just, I care less. So right when I stopped caring what others thought about me, because it's really hard to build the extraordinary life if you fear what others think. So that was one thing I stopped. I just stopped caring what other people think about me. And then I started realizing, Tyler, one of my tracks in my first mixtape, um, it's called in the From the Basement. I started realizing that Haters or anyone that talks down to someone or hates on somebody, they're obviously not mentally happy and they're frustrated, but you'll never meet a successful hater ever. It's impossible because you can't hate if you're happy and healthy. Exactly. So I started realizing when people hated, I kind of felt bad for them and I kind of wanted to help them. But most people, like we might, I don't know, you probably don't get haters. We might get a hater that's like, oh man, these, these two are passionate. Like what's, they're not saying uh -huh. anything that's valuable. And it's like they're just sad because they're stuck in their mom's basement broke mm -hmm. and we bring out insecurities in them because we're confident. Oh, yeah. So I just started stop fearing people. I started studying haters and understanding kind of the intellect and realize that they're just people that need help that I don't really pay any mind to because if we were struggling, they're not going to pay our bills. And it, and it sounds like you yeah. started focusing on making you happy and not worrying about 100%. making other people happy because that's their job. Yep. <laughs> hundred percent. So let's, so that was a big one for me. Yeah. It's a big one for everybody. Um, let's talk real quick about, you just mentioned the mixtape. So let's talk about the music, man, because it's one of the things that's drawn me to you and your content is I love music and I love what you're doing with it because it's not music. It's spoken word. It's spoken word, but it's also, it's, it's, man, it's like, it's like you're, you're trying to basically like scaling impact, man. Like I love the scaling impact. You're, you're, you're basically giving people one thing that I've done and it's for me, it's, it's law of attraction, but I've just eliminated all negativity. I was talking to my dad yep. last night and we were talking about like, t or no TJ. And I were talking to my videographer here. We were talking about uh, the fact that I don't consume much content at all. And he was saying, you know, the average American watches four hours of TV a day. And I'm like, I haven't watched four hours, four hours of TV in a year, the last year. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of that is just like, I eliminate all negativity. What you're doing with this music for me, is it something that I can listen to that is just a constant positive message. And that's all I want. All I want going in is positive so that what coming out is the exact same thing times 10. So talk a little bit about like, where did all this start? It started because I was consuming content like back in the day, like audios and watching videos. And, and I was trying to join, I was joining masterminds and courses and most of them were not a relevant B. They weren't tactical. See, they never gave me any value. They were super, super boring. Yeah. Not nothing. I'm not downplaying other people's content. I just could not find anything that really fired me up. So I'm sure. like, I got to create something. And I loved music. And music does something to you. It gets you through tough times. It emotionally sparks something in you that makes you just like in a better state of mind. But after you're done listening to an amazing song, after the activity you produced it, as far as that energy and that inspiration, it's gone. So I wanted to create something. The bottom line is I wanted to create something that gave that same emotional pull, but actually sparked people's mind and gave them tactics. So when they were done listening to my mixtape, they're like, wow, I'm not only fired up and juiced and excited, mm -hmm. I now have action steps and tactics to help me go be a better person and be a world-class human being. So that's why I did it is because the average, the average millennial listens to seven minutes of a podcast we already went over. Yep. <laughs> um, the last, the average millennial, and I'm like, damn, they're not listening to a long podcast. And then yep. some of these old gurus, Tyler, that are 50, 60, they're like doing two-hour podcasts. <laughs> and then they call me and say, I'm not relating to millennials. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Your podcast is three hours. Um, but that's a side note. So that's yeah. why I created it. I created it because I wanted to tell a story 
through spoken word, but also provide motivational, inspirational beats that really get people fired up to actually take action. But when you made that decision, what, did you have background in producing music before that? Or what was? No. Nothing. Well, I had, so, so, so here's, here's the, the key. I had a mentality from my mentors yep. that um, there's always an answer and you'll always be able to find the person you need if it's your weakness. So my yep. weakness was production and all that, but I found yep. a team. Yep. So all I knew is I wanted the finished product. I wanted to create spoken word and make mixtapes for people that motivate and inspire this generation. So I found the people to do it. I found producers. I found one of the people that was kind of doing my camera work said he knew somebody and he yep. started producing it. And my first couple weren't weren't amazing, but now I'm in a professional studio in LA, the same one that Eminem's been in and Chainsmokers has been in, which is That's crazy. Awesome. It's an amazing, I've been in a couple studios, but now I just love it. And now there's so much feedback. This last one got streamed 505,000 times wow. since its release, which is crazy. But now, and it's funny, you don't make a ton of money. I see why some of these artists mm -hmm. are not, not, not balling. Sure. <laughs> um, but like I make the least amount of money on these but it's my biggest like excitement. It's yeah. so funny. Well, and that's exactly I love what I was about to say. I have leverage now. It was exactly what I was about to say. Cause you said, you know, the first ones weren't that great. I was like, yeah, but I bet you had the most fun of your entire life oh, 100%. experiencing that. And, and the, like I was telling you with the, the daily bread, our vlog doing that intro, I was just like, man, when we started this vlog, I had no idea how much I would enjoy and love the creative process of it. And, and TJ, oh, it drives him, it, my videographer, TJ, who's sitting right here, like it drives him crazy. Cause I get so into it. But like when I'm sitting here, <laughs> that was creepy. TJ, <laughs> when, when I was sitting, when I'm sitting there and we're editing up, cause we do a 24 hour turnaround. So it's coming out. The content from today is, is, is from yesterday. And so we'll be sitting there at one o'clock in the morning after I've worked 20 hours. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I, I've just found this song. Let's play this right at this moment. And then we, we put it on there, we play it and it hits like, right when I'm talking about, and I'm like, ah, like literally, I'm just like, it's like, Oh my God, it's freaking perfect. I'm yeah. like, yeah, gets you yes, so yes. juiced. And yeah. I mean, it gets, but see, yeah, exactly what you're talking about. Like the way, like when you mix the beats and the music with something that's empowering, Yep. And you know that it's going to affect someone in a, in a just <laughs> a different way, right? Like, it's just incredible, man. I love that. You feel like it's that. the new era. I appreciate yeah. it. I really feel like it's the new era of motivation for the yeah. millennials. Like it's, it's, so it's really dynamic. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. I love that you listen to it. I, I make it for people that I make it for the five or 10% that really want to live a world-class life and make a massive impact because the world needs more leaders. But don't you followers. feel like it'd be a positive ROI if not one person listened to it? hundred percent. That's because why I made it's it. Just like, that's your, that's one your one it's life. your, it's your release. Like it's your, like, yep. like for me, like I play the piano and, and which is weird for a big dude with a beard and you know, like, but, but that's like, that's the only way I can actually relax is like when I'm just sitting there, I'm, it's like the only way I can tune out this chaos, absolute chaos that that's we right. live in, yeah. man. Um, last, it, last question who actually two more questions, but one question I want to ask you is what is one person that you want to hear on this podcast, the breadwinner podcast, some person that you'd, you'd value hearing from Drake, you say Drake, <laughs> that just came out of left field, but we're going to make that happen. You just put that Elon, on the, Elon, just, what am I supposed to, anyone else mean you could probably get pretty easily with one phone. <laughs> someone call. said, not, he, that about Someone said Elon Musk. Uh, yeah. Ryan Mickle just said Elon Musk. But dude, I'm, let's go with Drake. I'm, let's go with Drake. We can make that happen. Once you get him, you got to pass him my way, bro. <laughs> I love no the. I love if the I episode. get Drake, we'll do a joint podcast. How about that? We'll do a joint people, interview. People live. don't know he's the most strategic dude on the planet. He's like he is. He's like eighteen steps smart. ahead of everyone else. So I, I like I, I follow his business moves very yeah. carefully, and it's, well, it's he's inspiring. Yeah, it makes sense, and I can see it because it's like it's a quantity and quality, but not being a perf like he's just like let's just put it out if it hits. No one remembers a bad song, right? No one's like, yo, do you remember that song Drake put out? You know, a year and a half ago, that one day. Like, no, I don't remember because he's put out thirty eight hundred songs since then. <laughs> yep. Have you had ET on here? I have not. That's one I'm working on. I'm, that's one I'm working on. I'm, I've been talking with uh, Josh Hatch. His, uh, uh, his biz dev guy, he uh, lives here in South Carolina as well. So trying to make that happen. I've been talking a lot with Nikki Saunders, who does the social media over there. And, and they're good people. Oh, yeah. yeah I met her. I met her. At, was she, at, she was at the Founders event. Yeah, she was. <clears throat> yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah cool. Man. Yeah, man. Let me know if I can help in any way um, to get anyone that I know. Dude, I love it, man. So yep. 
let's give people one last piece of advice. They're listening to Peter and Tyler and talk and they're saying all this stuff and they're maybe getting a little overwhelmed. And what do I need to do to just to start? Like, what's that first step? First step is to understand and know yourself and know who you are and how to spark your own fire. Yeah. So most things are noise. Get rid of everything that's noise and focus only on what's most important to you and block everything else out. The number one reason, Tyler, I've seen, and I've trained thousands of entrepreneurs like and millennials, literally like one-on-one. Yep. The number one thing I think that holds most people back, including people watching this, number one is they never tell themselves right now matters. They're always like, you know, someday I'll, next week, when everything aligns perfectly, there's never the right time. So if you're waiting for the right time, good luck in this new economy. Um, so now matters. Most people spend the first half of their life saying they're too young. Yep. Then they spend the second half saying they're too old. So just my, 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 my focus is don't be like most people. Yep. You already have everything you need inside you to go crush it, but it's your job to bet on yourself and bring it out. And when you do that, that's when you start achieving massive success. But just make sure when you're achieving the success, it's what you really want. And it's based on, and it's based on your values and what's most important to you. So simplify everything. Simplicity is, I think execution is important yep. and you're, complex and when things are confusing you're not going to take any action so simplify everything yep. know yourself and understand right now matters not tomorrow like right after this right after they listen and watch this yep. they should be writing down notes and simplifying what's relevant and most important to them they should be taking action today like not tomorrow today because yep. if you maximize today tomorrow takes care of itself mm -hmm. if you maximize the days, the weeks take care of themselves. If you maximize the weeks, your months and years are amazing. So just tell, now matters, man. I mean, there's you need to have urgency. That's it. Now matters more than ever. Not two weeks from now. You're getting older. Your parents aren't getting any younger. Like, I want you to look in the mirror when you're 80 and be like, I have zero regret. Yep. I have zero regret. I did it my way. I built a great lifestyle I'm proud of. And that's what I want for people. If I could just lower someone's regret, I've done my job. But that's it. Just You, look, you get this life once. And and, fa and fast is the new big. Fast is the new big. It's the ones yep. that execute and execute quick. That's it. That's man, it. I, I love it. I love, I love this, man. It's awesome having you on. Tell everybody where they can find you online. Uh, I'm on Instagram, as you know, Peter yep. J. Voog. And then uh, GameChangersMovement.com. You can learn more about kind of our movement and stuff like that. GameChangersMovement.com. And then I'm everywhere on social media. If they say they're from this podcast and they reach out to me on Instagram or whatever, Yep. I'll definitely give them some time because they were on this podcast. And I really, I value you guys watching and listening. Hmm. I'm proud of you for investing in yourself. While most people escape reality, you're bettering your reality. So much respect to you. The world needs more people like you. So reach out if you have any questions and appreciate you guys. I love that you just said that because if they got to this minute 41 on the podcast, they're probably yeah. inching towards that 5%. And those 100%. are the ones that are actually going to go take this and make something happen. So guys, with that, this is the Breadwinner Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and we'll see you next time. Bread.